Hello everybody, I'm Kevin Wynn and this is Rewind, the show that looks back on Florida's past through historic film and video. This time bringing splashy Florida fun to the Big Apple. And for porpoises in Florida's water show, New Yorkers have decided that every pool should have a porpoise. Or at least a sea lion. Back in 1964, the world came to Flushing, Queens, to the New York World's Fair. Florida came to the fair, too, with a lakeside pavilion showcasing the Sunshine State. Originally aired by Miami TV station WTVJ in November 1963, FYI, Florida at the World's Fair gives us a behind-the-scenes look at Florida's colorful contribution to the 1964-65 World's Fair. Enjoy the show. Boy, this is some job. It's a beautiful exhibit. And I think Florida is going to have about the best exhibit right on the whole world's fair. Glad that I come up here from money to go to work on it. Alongside the lake here, just like a regular Florida setting, just practically the same as we have in our able to carry up down the I think it's just about as fine a thing as the state of Florida has ever given to the people up north. Florida at the World's Fair. Another in the series of FYI programs for your information. This high-flying giant orange already is the landmark for Florida's exhibit at the New York World's Fair. It sits uh, atop this tower as the winter begins to come on to the north and serves as a constant reminder to the thousands who see it each day, even though the fair isn't open, a reminder that there are, after all, better things in Florida. 110 feet high, the tower is the first completed structure here at the Florida site at the World's Fair. But come next April, everything from pretty girls to orange juice to jumping porpoises will be on hand for millions of visitors. Now, five months before opening, a good share of the fair's amazing and exciting buildings are standing. Two billion dollars is being spent here to erect the equivalent of 50 Fontainebleau hotels and all at the same time. Most of the exhibits and structures will be torn down when the fair is finished uh, some two years from now. But even partially completed, the site here at the fair is something from another world, ideas and designs never seen before. In a moment, we'll get a preview look of what the fair is all about, a peek at some of those amazing structures going up, including the Florida exhibit. New York Fair will open next April 22nd. At the moment, the best way to get a concept of the immensity and beauty of the World Exposition is to look at this scale model at the World's Fair Administration Building. Members of the Florida World's Fair Authority gathered around this miniature version to see, in particular, the location of the Florida exhibit. It's beyond the expressway to the left at the edge of Meadow Lake, next to a main fair entrance. The Unisphere by United States Steel, symbol of the World's Fair theme, Peace Through Understanding. 640 acres, over 200 exhibits. It will take days or weeks to see everything. The Florida World's Fair Authority, on October 25th, held a meeting at the Long Island Fair site. Robert Moses, tough-minded director of the fair, told the Floridians he was pleased with the Florida State Exhibit. Here is Robert Moses. Well, <clears throat> I guess you've had a chance to look around. Things are uh, beginning to uh, appear to be a little less uh, disorderly and complex, and people are in each other's hair less than they were a month ago. And a month from now, it'll look even better, although we know about the winter, and I think we know what our, our problems are. Uh, one difficulty is that uh, 
Uh, it's not only a question of uh, putting the heat on some people who are behind in their work, and this does not include Florida. Uh, telling people how to do their business who know how to do it, but it's a question of uh, putting a whole lot of pressure on people that are behind and that are a little bit weak and uh, uh, timid and uh, up against uh, problems of one kind or another. Uh, the whole show hangs together. You can't just separate it. You can't say, well, everything is all right in Florida and everything is all right in the, um, the state pavilion of New York and New Jersey and things are going well up in the transportation area with General Motors and Ford and whatnot. Uh, they're all so closely interrelated. The uh, uh, main arterial system and the road system and everything up to and including the landscaping, which of course is the last thing that's uh, done, uh, so interrelated that uh, 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 somebody who has a job uh, half a mile or a mile away from your building may cause an awful lot of trouble. Uh, might even conceivably make it impossible to get in and out. Uh, I think things are going along very well, and I think you're in a strategic place, as I said before, conspicuous and strategic, easily reachable, and uh, has uh, just about the best access that there is in the fair. And uh, I like I like everything about it. The Florida World Fair Authority members gathered at the Florida exhibit for the ceremony, lighting the citrus tower for the first time. Interested state businessmen also witnessed the illumination of the tower. Wendell Gerard, chairman of the Florida Development Commission, presided. It's very good to be here today on this historic spot of Florida's first World's Fair participation back in 1939. We're gathered together here with the members of the Florida World's Fair Authority to inaugurate the first stage of our new World's Fair participation, and that is the turning on of the light in the big Florida Citrus Tower. And as a part of this program, we have here today the Citrus representative on the Florida World's Fair Authority, Mr. Elgin Bayless, who will be one of the ones who will turn this light on, Mr. Ben Olet from Minute Maid, Together with other members of the authority, Mr. McGregor Smith from the light companies and the utilities, Mr. Bill Clapp, Mr. John Shoemaker, and others from throughout the state. And we feel like that this is the first stage of an enthusiastic program to carry the Florida story, not only in New York, but to visitors from all over the world. And Mr. Olert uh, and Mr. Bayless, if you would now, please step forward and let's flip this switch which turns on the light in the big orange of the Florida Citrus Tower, which is just here to our right. I would like to say that we're delighted to be here, and of course our objective is to attract people to Florida, and I believe that the Florida exhibit here at the World's Fair will do a great deal in promoting Florida and attracting people to Florida, and that is certainly going to be our prime objective. <laughs> McGregor Smith, board chairman of the Florida Power and Light Company, and his harmonica with plumbers, electricians, carpenters keeping time with Swanee River. About a dozen of these men live in Florida, but are working at the World's Fair, where wages are high and overtime plentiful. And this is what they're working on, the Florida exhibit. This is a scale model. Construction is right on schedule. The Citrus Tower is complete and serves now as a billboard advertising Florida every day to more people than would see it in Times Square. Three crowded expressways intersect at that tower location, and to the right of the tower is the main exhibit hall. The foundations and floor are complete. The structural steel is up, and the roof is now being put on. This will be a 25,000 square feet air-conditioned building. Twelve medium-sized Florida homes could fit inside. And this is the porpoise pool, 
The foundations are in, the concrete for the pool has been poured, plumbing is about finished. A seating section for 1,800 people is next to go up. The Mackle home and Cape Carl home have not yet been started. The floating Minute Maid and Florida Development Commission exhibits on the lakeside are underway. The exhibit contractor is George A. Fuller Company, one of the world's largest construction firms. Work goes on. Florida trees and grass and flowers will be planted and the orange juice ready to pour on April 22nd. The fair will be open for two summers. The Florida site, little over three acres, was acquired at no cost. It is second in area size for states only to that of New York. This main exhibit pavilion is built on wood pilings, as are all structures. Flushing Meadows was formerly a garbage dump, but it's now the site of $300 million worth of projects under construction, with another $60 million yet to rise. One of the most intriguing parts of the exhibit will be two floating display areas at the edge of the lake. A new, remarkably versatile material is being used to float the two exhibit pads on the waterfront. That material is manufactured in Dade County. The feather light material is called diplast, very similar to the material used in many cold drink coolers. It's extremely light and workable and will support considerable weight. In fact, a block 4 feet by 8 feet by 12 inches thick will float nearly one ton of weight. With workmen clamoring about, fast putting together the exhibit, I talked to a leading Florida businessman and showman about the value of such a display. He is Dick Pope, owner of famous Cypress Gardens. Uh, Dick, you were involved in pulling this thing together. I think you initiated the idea for Florida to have an, an exhibit. Why did you think it was so important? Well, look, how would I feel if I came to New York, or how would my friends feel if we came to New York to the fair, where most of us are coming to, and there wasn't a Florida exhibit here? We, it, it just in, inconceivable. And Florida was the first one to come in for the states, outside of New York State, and it led the way, and it's going to be one of the most successful things that we've ever done, and we're going to be so proud. It's prestige. It's inner. It's going to be a lot of satisfaction to every person in Florida to come up here and see this. They, we know uh, you can't understand what a beautiful uh, sight this is, what buildings and what effort has gone into it. Was there any trouble in getting the money from Florida interests to pay for this? No, there's been uh, there's been moments of indecision as when the prayer freeze came along. We didn't know whether we'd get the million dollars from the citrus industry, but we got it because they are businessmen and realize. And without advertising, and especially in the greatest fair of all times, what chance would they ever have to? Why should we say we're the greatest tourist state? Why would they say we're the greatest orange state? Why would they say anything great about Florida if we don't go to the World's Fair and show how great we are? This spot will mark probably the most entertaining, if not the most unusual exhibit at the entire fair. It's a tank which will hold 120,000 gallons. Four tons of salt each day will be used to artificially make salt water. But at the moment, the tank looks like a giant bathtub. This empty pool will be filled with salt water and the porpoises. It will be the Florida porpoise exhibit here at the fair, one of the outstanding attractions not only at the fair but here at the Florida exhibit. Right now, the six porpoises who will be swimming around in this pool are undergoing training at Miami Seaquarium. First thing you do when you start training them? Well, the first thing they've got to do is hand feed, and they've got to get your confidence and come up here close where you can give them a fish. Do they re resist eating dead fish at first? Yes, they certainly do, because out here in the bay, they only eat live ones, and they've got to get used to it. Uh, quite often, uh, they do more so when they come in in a group like this, other than singly. Now, I see this one coming up here and snapping. Is he of the particular star? Does he look like he's star material? Or? Well, that seems like a good porpoise. That's uh, one little trait we'll capitalize on as it comes up and snaps and splashes water. It's got quite a bit of possibility with that water splash. Each porpoise is different, has different traits. Is that right? Like this it has the snapping, spitting trait. Yes, sir. They have personalities just like people. Some of them are slow and one affection come up quickly. Uh, others are standoffish and uh, it, it takes all time in the world to get them to respond. Well, now, do they recognize you now? 
Well, they soon will. I don't know how long it takes. But, uh, I'll tell you one thing. They soon recognize that bucket of fish. <laughs> Whether for fish or applause, these newly caught porpoises will soon be performing as well as these veterans at Miami Seaquarium. Their show in New York will mark the first time such a presentation has been given at any international exposition. Fair officials already are predicting the performing porpoises will be a major drawing card for the entire fair. The amazing antics of these mammals of the sea will be millions of people's first look at living sea life. Called tyrant by some, genius by others, W.L. Stensgard has been at the center of plans for the Florida exhibit since the beginning. As executive director of the Florida World's Fair Authority, it has been his job to bring all the loose ends together and make the project work. Most agree that without his firm hand, the job would have been much tougher. Reporter Ed Fleming talked to Stensgard in his Palm Beach headquarters. Well, an exhibit like this must be a pretty expensive proposition. What do you think it'll cost uh, for the whole operation over the two years? Well, uh, we don't look at it as an expensive proposition. We look at what is a good investment, how can you be competitive. The uh, construction and the exhibit itself costs about $3,500,000. It will cost another million and a half dollars for the two seasons to operate the show. And uh, on that basis, uh, we expect to have about 18 million people in the Florida site. And for that type of audience and this type of show, that makes it a very reasonable cost in terms of what we accomplish. Well, you're talking about millions of dollars, and uh, that's a lot of money. You have a special knack for twisting large sums of money out of uh, the various interests here in Florida? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, to begin with, uh, the governor was uh, completely sold on the benefits that this would bring to Florida, and uh, the state appropriated the million dollars, as you know. Uh, we began... Uh, with the idea the CIPRAS Commission would give us a million dollars, and with the freeze, that was reduced to half. But the uh, Minute Maid Corporation uh, bought $425,000 worth of space, and in total, the CIPRAS Group uh, committed for a million dollars. In addition, uh, we've sold a million three hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of space to Florida municipals, uh, counties, uh, and uh, industry. And uh, the group that are now exhibiting, such as the Power and Light and many of these other industries, have agreed to raise uh, somewhere between a half million and seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. We expect uh, that our purpose show, uh, where we'll do ten shows a day uh, for the two seasons, will uh, bring us the additional amount of money that we need to uh, uh, operate and to make this show a success for Florida. Deltona is a new bustling planned community near Daytona Beach a project of the Mackle Brothers of Miami. They're building an exact replica of this $13,000 Deltona home in Florida's exhibit at the fair. They estimate the house will cost over $30,000 to build in New York, and all told, they will spend over a quarter million dollars on the exhibit. Reporter Joe Averill talked to President Frank Mackle, Jr. I'd like to touch really on this point of the $250,000. Uh, we relate it this way, that if there's five million people coming through the house, which we would hope, uh, this for $250,000 represents about five cents per person that could feel it, touch it, see it, see exactly what a typical house uh, in our community or in Florida mm -hmm. uh, would propose. Of. As a leading Florida businessman, what, what to you is the most significant thing of the, the entire Florida exhibit? Well, I think the most significant thing is uh, to show Florida in its breadth and in its depth, uh, this uh, great porpoise show and the citrus tower, and it gives the whole breadth and all of the, well, I call the meat and potatoes of Florida. It's not the froth. It's not. The, it's showing really what the heart and soul of Florida is, and it's done in the most dramatic way. Uh, I think this is great for Florida because most of the promotion coming out of Florida in the past, uh, not deliberately, but have been of a glittering go cold for the rich man thing. This exhibit will show the complete soundness of Florida, if I may call it that, in its whole breadth and depth. This should be a familiar scene. It's the 1939-1940 New York World's Fair. You see the Trilon and Paris Fair. It was held on this same site at Flushing Meadows, New York, the site of the 64-65 fair. 
Ed Grafton is the project manager of the Florida exhibit. At the fair, Ed is with the Miami architectural firm of Pancoast, Ferrandino, Grafton, Skeels, and Burnham. Ed, uh, does the site layout for this fair uh, compare about the same as the 39 fair? It certainly is the same site, Ralph. The Trilon and Perisphere were located in the center of the fairground, which is represented by this shaded area. The Unisphere, which is this, the new theme center, is located in the identical location. In this area up here, we have the industrial area. American Telephone and Telegraph and the other great corporations are in this area. This is the international area, foreign countries, and there are many of them. The federal exhibit is here. The states, uh, of which there are about 23, are in this location. This is the transportation area, and here we find General Motors, Ford and other corporations and companies in the transportation field. This is the amusement area, the Florida site on the edge of the lake, the Ringling Brothers Circus, an entrance, one of the main entrances to the fair, and this major intersection where Florida is going to get this tremendous exposure at the fair. Thank you, Ed. The co-manager of the Florida project at the fair is Jim Garland of Canal Pierce, Garland, and Friedman, Miami Architects and Engineers. We're standing uh, here with a scale model of the Florida exhibit. Uh, Jim, uh, was this easy to come by, this development of the design? No, Ralph, this was, ne was not easy to come by. As a matter of fact, we had the problem here of developing and wrapping buildings around a program, and the program developed at the same time, essentially, that the buildings did. For instance, particularly in the case of the tower, the Citrus Commission wanted to be sure to have an image which would be uh, lasting on the minds of the people, and many, many towers were uh, tried. Uh, as we developed individual ideas, these were criticized, discarded, improved on, and uh, as you can see, there were a number, and uh, we think that we came up with one that satisfies the requirements, particularly of the Citrus Commission. They wanted this tower to have a, a citrus theme, though. Very definitely, very definitely a citrus theme. Uh, Ed, is there anything unusual about this uh, porpoise uh, amphitheater? There is, Ralph. It has a 160-foot clear span suspension system for a very unique roof structure for weather protection. This is a fabric uh, manufactured by the Chemstrand Corp uh, Corporation, Pensacola, Florida, and donated to the exhibit. Have you tried to incorporate uh, as many Florida products as possible into the exhibit? Yes, and, we've, and there are many represented here. Well, it's an outstanding one to be sure. Is it going to remind us uh, truly of, of Florida as we know it, uh, Jim? Very definitely. All the planting, for instance, is being uh, grown here, and uh, we will carry it up there and plant it as soon as the weather is right. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it, and we congratulate both you gentlemen, Jim Garland and Ed Grafton, for the job that you've done in the design and the supervision of the construction and engineering of the Florida exhibit. The mastery of design, really, and... Construction will transform this model as we see it into reality. But you know, hasn't that really been the incredible record of the entire World's Fair? Not only at the Florida site, but all over. Practically every major nation in the world will be represented. Major American corporations and states will have exhibits. General Motors is spending a reported $50 million on this exhibit and Ford is spending $35 million. But both companies have shrouded their exhibits in secrecy. Billy Graham will have an exhibit, and so will the Vatican, featuring Michelangelo's Pieta, sent from St. Peter's to be exhibited at the fair. The Boy Scouts will be represented, even the U.S. Post Office. This is to be the World's Fair to end all World's Fairs. One official recently observed that this one will be so expensive, there will never be another. And yet those who recall the 1939 World's Fair will remember that that was to be the ultimate. That was the one where everybody was gawking and talking about a new pipe dream, a pipe dream called television. When this fair is all over in 1965, it will be turned into a park. The Unisphere and some of the buildings will remain. 
the Unisphere probably to become as the Eiffel Tower in Paris has become, the remnant of another great exposition, a permanent reminder of man's imagination and boldness. Florida at the World's Fair. Another in the series of FYI programs. on a special project of WTVJ News. That's it for this edition of Rewind. Our show features historic film and video from the Lynn and Lewis Wilson II Florida Moving Image Archives. To see more from the Wilson Archives collections, visit our website, wolfsonarchives.org. You can search the archives catalog, watch video online, and connect to our YouTube channel, where you'll find hundreds of carefully curated clips. Or link to the Wilson Archives Facebook page to keep up with our busy calendar of historical happenings. Until next time, I'm Kevin Wynn. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.